There are lots of great alternatives to the standard CPM directory command, which add extra functionality and combine features that normally have to be accessed through other CPM commands, such as stat or show. In this video, I want to show a few of the best directory replacements, which provide a better display with more facilities in a smaller sized executable. I also want to show a couple of others which do something a little different. There is an accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website which goes into a bit more depth about each of the programs and also shows you where you can find them. First I want to show the standard commands that come with CPM. Uh, so there's the, under CPM 2.2, we have the dire command and the stat command. So if we look at the dire command, we can see that all it does is just list the file names. And then if I run stat, then it will tell me how much disk space is free on the disk. If I run it with uh, some um, a file description, then we can see that it shows us the uh, size of the files, the number of um, records, and uh, how many extents it's using, and uh, the attributes that it's using. If I do that again, uh, but selecting a few less files this time, you can see the titles at the top. So we've got records, bytes, um, extents, and then the attributes, and then uh, the file name. And as you can see at the bottom, it has the uh, bytes remaining at 11K. So Dyer and Stat, uh, they work fine, uh, but they're a bit limited as far as their use. And uh, if we look at the Stat command, we can see that it's 5K in size. So um, that's, uh, that's definitely smaller than uh, some of the directory replacements. But it, does something, it is something we need to bear in mind because the functionality is fairly limited as far as uh, directory, uh, directory facilities are concerned. One other problem with the uh, built-in commands is that uh, we can only use them on the current user. So if I give an example on my, uh, on my D drive, which I'm using user 0 and user 1 uh, with. So if I want to do... So for example, if I want to have a look at D1, uh, so drive D, user 1, it says no file. So to be able to have a look at that, I need to switch over to user 1, and then I can do a directory. So the, uh, the replacements can make that a little bit easier. I'm now going to switch to a CPM3 system. As uh, under CPM3, they've taken the existing uh, DIR command and extended it. They've also added a DIRS command, which lists files with the system attribute. So the straight DIR command provides a list of the files without the system attribute. And then if I do a DIRS, we can see more files, ones that have the system attribute. Uh, the DIRS command will not list the files with the system attribute, so you have one or the other with those two commands in that way. Uh, however, uh, the, ex the additional functionality of DIR is added through the dir.com file, which you can see in the third column, third row down. And the dir command allows us to add options. So for example, if I have a look at dir.com and I have a look at its size, then we can see that it's 15K, so it's really quite a big program. Uh, for the amount of functionality that it provides. But it is quite useful. Uh, for one thing, it allows us to look uh, over, uh, over the attributes of a file. So if I look at the attributes, and there we are, we can see that it's listing things like uh, the number of bytes, the number of records, uh, the attributes as in system, uh, read, write, and it can also display the archive bit, uh, the archive attribute if that's selected. And um, and we can do more complicated things with it. So, for example, if we have a look at uh, the all the H. So, if we look at all the H star dot star files on all users on all drives, and there we are. It's going through. 
and it's found that there are um, H star dot star files on uh, user one and uh, user zero, which page to past. So uh, that's really useful for seeing uh, for trying to find files on a disk. And um, another nice thing about it, if I go back to uh, looking at uh, this drive here, do size again. It actually sorts the directory as well, which makes it much easier to uh, to find files. Although it does sort it horizontally, so you have to continually go from left to right to left to right to uh, to scan through the files you're looking for. But it's certainly better than an unsorted list most of the time. Uh, CPM also provides the show command. The reason I mention this is that. The dire command shows us the number of bytes that have been used by a um, uh, by the file. So, for example, it says at the bottom there total bytes 239k, uh, the number of files found 31, and that we're using 35 out of the 64 maximum directory entries that we can have on the disk. Uh, it also shows the number of records uh, that have been used, uh, 1,782, but it doesn't show the free disk space. So if I want to show that, I can do a show command like that, which allows us to provide the uh, the number of um, bytes free, a number of K free, which in this case is 2K. And it also shows that the disk is set to read-write. Uh, there are other facilities that show can provide, such as uh, the, um, uh, the number of files being used for each user area, uh, the number of free directory entries and what have you. But... Um, but they're two separate programs, and uh, the show command itself, I show the size of the die command. If we have a look at show, which uh, I'll bring those two up. So, uh, there we are. So, as you can see, dir.com 15k, show.com 9k. So, in total, we've got four. Uh, 24k of executable, which is you know on a small disk, it's quite a sizable chunk. So uh, the um, the directory replacements that I want to show are much smaller than this, and uh, provide some nice like, extra functionality. I now want to show some of the directory alternatives that were created because of the limitations of the CPM 2.2 uh, DIR and STAT commands. So uh, the commands I want to show have a, um, have a number of things in common, and they've all been extended to support CPM3 and other compatible systems. Uh, so each of these uh, directory replacements can show the number of K uh, that files are using, uh, how much disk space they're using, and how much we have free. And uh, they all sort in alphabetical order. And uh, they can also list directories uh, using what I would like to do like this, uh, uh, DIR V1 colon, which unfortunately isn't supported on the built-in CPM commands. DA is the smallest of the programs that I want to show at only 2K. It's called DA because it stands for Directory Attribute. And if I uh, start the command, we can see that at the top of the, uh, the, top of the directory listing, uh, above the actual files, that it shows the amount of disk space that has been used by the, uh, sorry, the amount of, the total size of those files, uh, 234k. There's nine of them, and they use 234k on the disk, and that there's 5k free. And this really points to something that's also a little bit different about DA, is that it can show the size of the, the actual, the actual file size as opposed to the amount that they take up on the disk, because of the difference between the block size and the um, size of the file, uh, CPM would normally report the, uh, the size of the file rounded to the nearest block size that that disk is using. So we can see this if we look, run DA22 on the um, on the I drive. And there we are. So if we look there at the top now, we can see that there's 16K in use. Uh, si sorry, the files come to 16K in total, but they use 20K in total. 
and that's just because of the difference that I mentioned. The, my iDrive has a bigger block size, and therefore the uh, files are, uh, uh, use a different amount of disk space to their actual file size. So I can show this if I look using the uh, built-in command, built-in cpm command. And there we are. We can see that, for example, with d.com it's reporting it as 4K and um, and the same with each of them, d31.com, 4K, the IR5, 6K and uh, disk 77B, uh, 6K again, so 1K less than, um, than the size that's reported by da22.com uh, because that is reporting the correct file sizes. Another difference with DA22 is that uh, I mentioned the directory attributes and we have more control over those. So for example, I can list the attributes using the um, question mark option and the dashes there to the right of the names represent the attributes. Now on, uh, on this disk, the D drive, I'm not using any particular attributes for any of those commands, but if I instead look at my A drive and we can see that the system attribute is being used for files like the by, uh, by.com, cls.com, date.com. And we can also change attributes as well. So if I want to make a file on my D drive write only, then I could do that um, by using da22, d31.asm, for example. And then I could say uh, set and I can make, I can set the uh, read only for it. And now if I do DA22 and show the attributes, we can see that DA20, uh, D31.asm has the uh, read only attribute set, and I can clear that. As so. Uh, one other thing that DA22 does, uh, sorry, DA, it's called 22 because it's uh, version 2.2. So this is version 2.2 that was released by uh, Eric Meyer, and this is dated January 1987. Uh, I sometimes re rename the commands, but for this demonstration, I just kept it at DA22. So uh, if I look using the hash option, then it displays the records that are there. By default, uh, DA sorts vertically. No, it doesn't. It sorts horizontally. But uh, you can change it quite easily uh, by changing a byte in the uh, in the um, com file to make it uh, make it dis make it sort horizontally. Uh, sorry, vertically, which makes it much easier then to scan. Is you just go down each of the columns to uh, to find the files that you want to look at. Uh, you can also change the display so that it can use a different number of columns, which can be really useful if you don't have an 80-column output. And uh, all in all, uh, yeah, I like DA. It's small, it's quick, and uh, one problem with it, it doesn't use AT, it isn't ATH, uh, ATAT compatible, which is a bit of a shame. It also doesn't have any source code with it, and there are some other limitations uh, so that it can only cope with up to 255 files. Uh, file sizes of 999k and uh, 8190 k free disk space, although this shouldn't really cause a problem for the majority of systems. The next command I want to show is called uh, DIRR. It's uh, a little bit quicker than, uh, than DA and still re relatively small at just 5k in size. Uh, this by default lists the directory vertically and, uh, and it can also list the attributes for each file as well. So if I demonstrate that on the A drive, I use the options ES, E for extended, which will display the attributes, and S to display any system files. And there we are. If we look at by.com, we can see that we have by.com, and then it's 1K in size. It's on user zero, and it has the uh, the system attribute indicated by the S. The attribute for system is also indicated by the file having its uh, O in .com uh, underlined, and this is just really to do with the way that 
uh, attributes are set on CPM. Uh, the high bit is set for that point in the file. That indicates the, uh, the system attribute. And uh, the uh, DIS, yeah, it's a nice program. Uh, again, it shows the amount of free disk space, the amount used, and uh, the uh, total size of the disk. So the total size of the disk is uh, 241K. And uh, another quite nice feature of DIR is that you can store the directory to disk. And I'm going to demonstrate this by also doing something else. And you can show files for all users on the current disk, only the current disk, but uh, all users. So if I look at all the, I want to search for all the ASM files on my D drive, and I want to search for all users, and I want to send those disks, uh, those files, uh, sorry, uh, record a copy of that directory to the disk using the F option, then I can do that. I might do that again, actually, using the E option, because then that shows me uh, the user number that it's in as well. So we can see d31.asm, 26k, user 0, h1.asm, 1k, user 1. And then we now look at the disk. We can see that there's a file there called uh, tilde dire. And if I look at that, there we are. That's the directory that we uh, that we displayed above. So all in all, uh, DIR uh, is a nice command. It's also um, 8080 compatible, which is great. And uh, you can configure it through the source code that's provided. So you can configure how you want the uh, the highlighting to work, and um, and uh, how many columns is displayed as well. Uh, the version I'm running here is version 5, which was released by Irv Hoff on uh, 7th of January 1986. He tries to explain the origins in the documentation, which is quite interesting. And uh, there's some more information about that on the, uh, the accompanying, website, uh, accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. I now want to show SD. Uh, it's called SD. Uh, it stands for Super Directory, and with very good reason. It's fast, it's full of features, and yet it's still only 6K in size. You can do pretty much everything that uh, DIRR can do, uh, but uh, it can't list attributes separately. Not really a problem, though, because it uses the same system for, uh, for displaying attributes as DIR does uh, beyond the actual uh, listing of the separate attributes. And I can show that on the A drive uh, by listing the system uh, system files, or at least including files with the system attributes. And you can see in by.com, for example, that the O is underlined to indicate that the system attribute is set, and then other characters would be underlined if it was, for example, uh, read-only or the uh, archive attribute. In any case, it's a nice display, and uh, we can see that uh, we've got the drive A, user 0, it's using 31 files, taking up uh, 239k, and there's 2k free. I've uh, used the source code, uh, it comes with the source code, 8080 source code, uh, which is highly configurable, lots of different options in there to display how you want it on the, uh, how you want it displayed. Um, they suggest using underline for the title, uh, but I prefer having the uh, high intensity video and just using the underline for the uh, for the attributes. I'll do an upcoming video showing how to configure uh, super directory, uh, showing how you can configure those those display options, but also other options. By default, super directory is configured for two drives A and B, and uh, can use up to 16 user areas. So I'll show how you can. Uh, extend that to more drives and up to 32 user areas for CPM3 systems. But there's some also some other options in there, uh, providing support for Z80 DOS, uh, Z CPR3, and um, options for conf uh, that would be useful for uh, people running RCPM systems. Uh, for the moment, though, I just want to show some of the um, 
uh, some of the features of SD. So uh, if I have a look at finding all, uh, we'll have a look for all H star dot star files, and we'll look on those for all. Oh, we won't actually, we'll look at all ASM files. So. I put the question mark in between because then that will also show us if there are any files that are crunched or squeezed because they would come up with an S or a Z typically there. Okay, so I use the A option which is all user, all user areas and then the B option which is all drives and then that will go through each drive looking for any files that match what we asked for. So we can see that there are files on my C drive, uh, d31.asm and dir5.asm. There's, uh, there's th those files are in user 0 and then there are other files in user 1, d1, uh, h1.asm and h2.asm and then further files on my I drive, you know, both in user 0 and user 1. And you can also see that uh, that we have the uh, .azm files which are crunched ASM files. So uh, yeah, that's really, really useful if you're trying to find files, if you have multiple drives, uh, rather than trawling through them all, particularly if you use the user areas a lot. Uh, another interesting feature with, uh, with SD is that you can list all the members of uh, an LBR or ARC file. So if I have a look on this disk. Uh, in fact, no, I'm going to my I disk. I'll do SD318B. So uh, that's the version we're running at the moment, version 138B, which is um, which was released by Ken Reed, uh, 20th of August 1989. There's um, quite a history to uh, to SD, and there's some more information about that on the uh, the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, for the moment, though, I'll list all the I think I'll list it on all the drives. So I'll do all users, all drives. Uh, we're going to show the contents of the uh, LBR or ARC files and we can also send it to disk as well. Uh, send it to a file which will be called disk.dir uh, another thing I like about SD is that it appends to that file each time you run it. So if you're trying to compile a list of all the files that you have, uh, then, uh, then that will allow you to build up that list quite easily. So there we are. We'll run this. And it's gone through listing all the files. And now it's created a file called uh, disk.dir, which we'll have a look at. There we are, and this is the file contents. So this is what was being displayed on the screen before it whizzed past. And um, so we have uh, drive A listing the files there, then drive B, I uh, use zero for both, uh, then C, and then this is where it should get a little bit more interesting. So we've got the D drive, D0, and then below that we've got D0 library directory, so D0, DA22.LBR, and there we are. We can see that it's listing the members of that LBR file, and then another one below it, uh, DIR5.LBR, listing the members of that, and then a third for uh, SD. So, uh, yeah, again, this can be really nice for going through and finding all the files that you have available on your, on your disks. One last feature that I want to show with SD is that like uh, DA, we can look directly into user areas by specifying the user number after the drive letter. So in this case, I'm looking at user area 1 on drive A. And uh, now user 1 
on uh, drive D. So uh, yeah, that makes it much easier for scooting around looking at things rather than having to laboriously switch into a user like that. So yeah, I, I would recommend Super Directory. It's the best one for me. Um, it's loads of features, easily configurable, and uh, it's probably the best one for most people. Say just 6K in size, so it shouldn't be too big a decision unless you have a really constrained system or perhaps you need some of the other uh, facilities that um, the DA offers, uh, such as being able to uh, alter and view attributes. But generally it's better to use another command to do that. The previous three programs are all good replacements for the built-in DIR and associated commands. However, there are other programs that take a different approach, and this is what I want to show next. The first of these programs is D, or What's New. The focus, on, the focus of D is all about showing what's changed in a directory. So we can see the file there, d31.com. It's 3K in size. Uh, it comes on as an assembler file on the, uh, the Walnut Creek CD, or at least the latest version that I found has. Uh, that's version 3.1. It was released by Irv Hoff, uh, 5th of May 1984, although it looks to have originally been created by Ward Christensen, uh, 23rd of November 1978. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a nice old program. If we, um, if we, once we've received the assembly file, once we've downloaded that or uh, put it onto a disk from the Walnut Creek CD, then um, then we just have to assemble it to create the com file. So nice and easy. If I run uh, D31, it will show a list of files in the directory saying that they're new. The reason it's saying they're new is because they are new to D, which is the important thing. It records what's in a directory and what changes. So I'm going to demonstrate this by copying uh, d31.com over to my user1 area of the D drive. I'll use uh, disk 7 for this, uh, which is a great little file management utility. I've covered it in another video about interactive file managers on CPM, so you can have a look at that uh, sometime. So I'll copy this to D1, and then I'll move to D1, and then I'll run it again, and it's saying now that I have um, four files new. So I'll set those files into D31. I'll give it a date, 29, uh, the 29 July 10th. Now if I run, now what it does, it creates a file called d.com, which contains those files in it. So if I run d.com, it'll say there's nothing new since I set it, except for one new file, d.com. So I'll add that file. And now if I run d.com again, no new files. If I uh, add a file, another file, goodbye.me we'll call it, uh, have a look on the disk, there it is, goodbye.me. And then if I run d.com, it'll say that it's a new file. So I can add goodbye.me. again and goodbye.me isn't listed as a new file. If I look at the disk again I have a file called hello.me. Uh, well what I think I'll do I'll delete all the .me files and if I run D again it's showing that those files have been moved or deleted uh, since we last set the file. So yeah, this is really useful then for keeping a track of new files. Uh, it can make it particularly useful for RC uh, our CPM systems and, um, and D by default is just 3K although it grows as the number of files that it records grows. Um, I want to show how you can lock it as well because if I run this back on my user 0 and I'll run D31 set and I've got my uh, D.com file there I move over to my iDrive 
and run it, you suddenly see that it's saying there's all these new files. And that's because it's comparing the new the, the files that are on the I drive to the files that it's set within D.com, which came from the D drive. And it'll also say that there are files that have moved elsewhere or been deleted because those files, were, again, were recorded in D.com, but they aren't on the I drive, they're on the D drive. So if I go over to my D drive and I say D lock D colon, and now if I go back over to the I drive and run D.com from there, I know it's happy because it's looking at the D drive and not the I drive. The last feature of D that I want to show is that it can create uh, subfiles. So I've moved over to a CPM 2.2 system. The reason you might want to create these submit files is that is the CPM 2.2 doesn't have uh, doesn't have an archive attribute, uh, and therefore, if you want to continually back up disks or keep a track of things that you're backing up, then there's no easy archive bit to do it, but uh, D can come to the rescue on this. So if I record the files that are on this disk, using the set command again, and then I run D, I'm going to add D.com, because we don't want to, uh, we want to keep that on there. I'm also going to add another file called D.sub. Now, once I run the sub command, this will be the file that it creates, D.sub. But if I don't add it first, then the D.sub will be in among the list of files to, to back up or for whatever else you want to do with them through the, uh, through the sub command. So uh, if I run D, D now, right, we've got one file missing, but that's okay, we'll create that. And I'm going to pretend as if we've already backed up the files on this disk, or maybe we're just uninterested in the files that are already in this disk, and create three new files. So I'm going to create test1.asm. And then I'm going to create test2.asm. And next, test3.asm. Right, if I run D, we've got uh, several new files there. I'll erase all the back files to make this easy. Good, and there we are. Test1.asm, test2.asm, test3.asm. And I want to copy those over to my C drive. So if I run D sub and then type my D dot sub file, you'll notice that after it created the after it wrote the submit file that it didn't list it as move as uh, having moved or been deleted because it's uh, it exists now. So there's the D dot sub file that I've created. So at first it runs X sub, which then uh, runs pip and introduces into pip the three following or uh, well, four following lines. Uh, the last line just comes out of pip. Uh, so before each file, test1.asm, test2, test3, we can see before each file is $1 and it closes with $2. So these are the commands, sorry, these are the arguments that I pass to the submit command. So if I go and run this now, I want to copy uh, these files to my C drive as if I'm backing them up. I will just double check that I don't have any files to test anything on the C drive because that'll make it easier if I haven't. Okay, so I'll erase that file. I don't know what it is. Oh, I do. Yes. So I'll erase that. Okay, so onto my A drive. 
So I'm going to run submit d colon d. So that's the uh, d.sub file on d. I'm going to tell it to record to back up to my C drive from my D drive and I want it verified. And there we are. So as you can see, it's run the submit file, run xsub, xsub, uh, run pip, and then given the three commands to pip, and then if I press enter, we'll come out of pip now. And if I go to the C drive and have a look at my C drive, I'll have a look at the test file specifically. And there we are, it's copied the three files over to my C drive. So yeah, really handy for backing up. As you can see, D is an interesting little utility and can be a real time saver uh, in the right situations. Finally, I want to show the zx command. So the uh, version that I have on the disk is uh, zx 3.1, which, um, uh, which is written by uh, Mike Yaris. And uh, the earliest date I have for it is uh, 1985. Uh, but this version, uh, this version 3.1, sorry, is from 1986. Um, I'm showing it not so much because I recommend it, just because it does a few interesting things. It's only 3K in size, and if I run it, oh, we can see zx31.com, uh, 3K in size. But it doesn't just provide directory commands. In a way, a bit like DA22, where it tries to provide other commands, um, but uh, but a little different. So ZH31 can do the straight uh, directory display as we can see here, but it can also do things like copying files. So if I want to do ZX31, I want to copy ZX31.com to ZX31C.com for example. Then I use the C command at the end to indicate to copy. And then it displays the directory again, so I can see uh, whether it's taking effect, and it has. We can see now that we have zx31c.com. And uh, we'll also see at the top there that we've got uh, zx v 3.1 equals, and then one colon zx31.com, and then two colon zx31c.com. The reason that those two files are there is that we can use those to um, to reference files that we've previously previously referenced. So, for example, I can run zx31, and I want to rename zx31c.com, but I don't need to type that. I can just type two to zx31d.com. I press use the R option to do that. And now you can see that I have zx31d.com uh, renamed. Um, I could also uh, copy uh, copy zx, uh, zx31d.com to another file, or even actually better than that, I could copy zx31 to zx31d.com again. So I could do zx31, and then I just do one, two, copy. So that would copy from zx31.com to zx31d.com. And there we are. There's nothing really to display that's changed uh, because um, because the file already exists. We can delete it though. So we can do zx31 to delete. So we're going to delete zx31d.com and uh, no we're not. We're going to try that again. Erase, sorry. There we are. So we've erased the uh, zx31d.com. And uh, if we want to unerase it, we can do the same thing, but with you. And there we are. We've unerased it and we've come back with it. So the unerase function is quite handy. The being able to reference uh, different files is handy. The best use of the 
previous file reference is if we're using multiple um, multiple files. So, for example, if I um, if I copy I copy the uh, the compile as zx thirty one dot com to um, We'll copy to uh, what should we call it to x one com, and then I'll copy that again. So I do zx thirty one just one this time. It's two dot com copy, and then lastly zx thirty one from x three dot com copy. Then we've got our files x one x two x three dot com. If I want to erase all those, I could do ZX31 uh, star X star dot com erase, and then we list those files uh, now that they're erased, and then I could actually reference those files. So I could do ZX31 one and erase, and there they are. They're back. So uh, that can make life quite easy, particularly if you're bulk copying files between disks. Uh, you can just reference each time using the, uh, the mnemonic one or two. Uh, uh, ZX31 has a, um, sorry, ZX, I keep calling it ZX31. Uh, ZX has a, um, a, a, a facility to type files, but it does it in quite an interesting way, um, which I'm not convinced is all that useful. But uh, I'm prepared to be persuaded. So if I have a look at the zx3.doc file and I type it with the T command, then it views it sector by sector, which makes it quite easy to read. And I can go back with Control B again, sector by sector, and I can also. I run that again, it's 31. If I wanted to edit that, then I could press Control E and it puts me into edit mode. You can see that it's displayed the whole of the sector. So if I want to edit it, I have to I have to edit uh, as I find it. So I want to, say I wanted to change it from append.com to append.moc for example then I could go press the equal sign to go there dot moc press return and there we are that's our edited command. I might put that back so you don't get confused Um, turn and there we are. We've uh, put it back. Uh, you can also alter the um, carriage return and line feed. So if you look on the, I'll go back into the edit mode. I go into edit, and then if you look towards the, uh, so where it says edit below, and then the line below that, towards the end of that line, it says char dot zig one k, and it's got an open square bracket, close square bracket. And that stands for carriage return line feed. And you can actually insert those using carriage return line feed uh, directly into the sector. Uh, so that's that. I'll exit with Control X. And um, and that's pretty much it for ZX. I say it's interesting because it adds those copy and arrays and done arrays and facilities, and you might find the view facilities. You can also print from ZX as well. It does have a few problems. It um, it gets the reporting of disk space free and used um, off on bigger disks when using CPM 2.2 and they're completely wrong when you use CPM 3. It also only works in the current user area uh, so um, so that may or may not be a problem depending if you use multiple areas. It uh, it's only works on machines with a Z80 and doesn't come with any source code but, um, but if you can ignore those problems or they are problems for you uh, maybe because you're using CPM 2.2 with smaller disks, then for a 3K executable, it really is quite a powerful program and, uh, and quite friendly and nice to use. It's got some good documentation, so definitely worth checking out.
Well, I hope you enjoy seeing these directory alternatives. Uh, they each have their own pros and cons and have uh, different things to offer. Uh, but, um, but some of them can be ever so useful and uh, make using CPM much more pleasant. There's uh, some more information about, the, uh, about them on the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. And there are also other CPM videos uh, on the uh, Tech Tinkering YouTube channel, so uh, do subscribe to be kept updated.